You might have noticed over the past few weeks, maybe some of the past few videos, that the reptile room has been reorganized and there's been some changes going on. Like we've removed the giant plant tank that I had here. We finally emptied some of the plants over here. And across the room this way, We've moved a bunch of the straw for us as well. Well, today we are continuing that trend and going to be dealing with this kind of disheveled morning gecko tank behind me. What's up guys, it's Mike with Alpha Reptile, back with another video today. And today, like you guys already saw, we're going to be dealing with the morning gecko tank behind me. If you guys aren't familiar with my channel or who I am, I'm a reptile hobbyist, just like the rest of you, I imagine. I also run a business with my girlfriend, The Jungle Vault, links in the description down below. Fantastic place to find some cool fat tails and we'll be bringing a lot more to the website very soon. But enough with the self-promotion and let's talk about this morning gecko tank. So I built this tank all the way back in June and I just got around to posting it in late November so if you guys are interested in that build I'll leave a link in the description down below along with all the other more useful links that you can find including the website my Instagram go check it out click the show more tab and you'll find it but that's all besides the point of this video this morning gecko tank has had drought when the geckos weren't in there I totally forgot about it and didn't water it so a bunch of the plants died then and the ones who made it through the drought then got infested with thrips it's definitely been a roller coaster for this tank and today we're gonna be taking it from the kind of desolate wasteland that it is to a nice spruced up bioactive enclosure now beyond just refurbishing this enclosure and make it bioactive once again I'm also going to be kind of enriching it with a little bit of a basking spot for these guys because I noticed they hang out right under the LEDs and I think that they could use a little bit of extra heat. In order to provide that basking spot, we will be adding an Exoterra Nano Reptile Dome. I do want to thank Exoterra for sponsoring this video, so thank you very much, and we'll talk about that later. Now, the first thing that I have to worry about is getting these girls out of the tank. I believe there's four adults in there, but I need to catch them because this wouldn't be possible with a bunch of little crazy morning geckos zipping around. So let's do that. The first step to catching them is removing the lights and bringing down the tank, reaching above my head to catch geckos that will go mock one at any second. Not the best idea. I lifted it off the shelf and I'm gonna put it on the table, which allows for much easier access. With my giant ape-like hands, trying to catch these tiny little geckos is a very delicate process. Every time you grab one, it feels like you're squishing them. Now that they've been contained, I can move the tank out to our working space. And first thing I'm going to do is remove the lid. Removing the lid gives me full access to the entire enclosure. Now that I'm looking at the lid, I can definitely tell that it's an old style Exoterra, which means I'm going to have to redo this tank once again. That allows me to replace the screen top should anything rust out. These old models aren't made anymore. It's an issue. I'm also going to remove the doors because having full access to the front is also critical and to just make sure there's no catastrophic accidents with those doors. Now I just need to take a step back, look at the tank, and decide mentally what I'm going to do. In this case, I'm going to remove as much as I possibly can, remove any of the loose wood pieces, all the plants that are still remaining, as well as temporarily remove the leaf litter so I can have access to the substrate layer. Now that I've come up with an action plan, it's time to execute. I have everything laid out in front of me and I know what I'm doing, so let's get to it. As you can see here, we have a clean slate and everything is in the wash bin. So what I'm going to do now is take the wood and a couple of the dirty plants and bring them over to the sink for a quick washing. Now that we've got all the decor cleaned off and ready to go, it is time to go plant shopping. And thankfully we can do so in the reptile room. I grabbed my plant trimmers and now it's time to go to Let's work. figure out what we want. First off, I'm taking this cool kind of random weed that grew in a shipment of plants from Ecuador. I don't have an exact species on it yet, but I'm working on it. So I think that'll do all right because this is actually in with the baby morning geckos. 
Then we can move over to the massive skyscraper tank and take a few cuttings. So I'm eyeing this little ficus pumula as well as one of these beautiful bromeliads. Now that I'm finished grabbing plants from the skyscraper tank, I turn my attention over to my plant bins where I'm able to find a few little trimmings of the Monstera dubia and a Peperomia species that's growing in there. From there, I make my way around the room and end up at the Amirga Basileri bin where I can take some really cool philodendron species green. It's from Peru, so it's cool. Now that we've concluded our plant shopping around the reptile room, I think I'm gonna take some time to figure out where I'm gonna put this heat lamp because it's important that I don't burn any of the leaves that might grow up in the middle of the tank. While I figure out the placement, allow me to chat a little bit about the nano reptile domes by Exoterra. I know, I know, the nano domes aren't necessarily something new to the hobby, but what I like most about the Exoterra ones is just how well crafted they are and how versatile they can be. Compared to the competitors domes, they feel a lot more robust and refined. They feature a very reflective interior, which will allow for some reflection of hopefully some UV rays that might be coming in the future. As I mentioned earlier, the versatility is truly one of the highlights of these nano domes. It really unlocks the power of a racking system when you only have to put a spacer that's about four and a half inches rather than the eight plus inches that a standard hood measures in height. Like I said, it's super handy when it comes down to planning a racking system because it just allows you to save that few inches and honestly it makes a huge difference. The Exoterra Reptile Nanodomes are extremely functional when it comes down to adding a little bit of extra heat over those animals that need it. In our case we have it over now the morning geckos, we have it over the Boiga nigriceps, we also have them over all of our strophorous species as well. They truly are a great tool for all of us that are looking to save a little bit of space above our tanks. I do want to say a huge thanks to Exoterra for sponsoring today's video and in the meantime I think I've actually figured out where I want the heat lamp to be so let's go ahead and leave it right here. Now that we have the light placed, we can figure out the rest of the tank. First, I'm gonna put back the hardscape that I removed, the manzanita branch, as well as that little cork tube with the silta picana peeking out of it. And then we can move straight into planting. When I'm planting my tanks, I really wanna consider the growth habit of the plants. I'm not just throwing things in willy-nilly, just hoping it'll do okay. When I'm placing the ficus pumula, I understand that it's going to be growing in kind of a crazy growth habit and will typically cling to the walls, so I'm really hoping that is the case. And when I'm placing the green philodendron in the background, I also know that it's an aeroid and it will grow up the rest of that background. Keeping all this in mind, let's just watch how it plays out. Now in order to mount this bromeliad, I ended up spiking it into the background where I used a U-shaped piece of wire in order to shove it into the dry lock and pin it in place. And the last step of this build is just replacing the leaf litter and making it look like there's a bit of clutter going on. And the final piece of the puzzle is putting back their little egg laying site. As you guys saw in the beginning, there's a ton of eggs in this little seed pod. Here it is, the finished product. ready to be moved back into the reptile room. And thrown back on the shelf. Here is the finished product back in the reptile room where it's meant to be. There it is, you guys. That is the final morning gecko build right behind me here. Super nice, super bright, and plenty more alive plants. I intend to keep it that way as well. But I'm really thinking that I'm missing something. Uh, right, the geckos. I suppose you should probably put those in there. And 
now that we have the ladies back in their little estate, I want to thank you guys all very much for watching this video. I want to thank Exoterra for sponsoring this video. If you guys are interested in providing some versatile, very well-built heat lamps to your animals, make sure you click the link down below as well as check out Exoterra for what products you might be looking at. Recently, I've been thinking of making a more scientific video about parthenogenesis in these geckos. You can let me know in the comments down below if you are interested in a video like that by typing in the words morning gecko and then something else maybe about the video. If you are interested in something like that, make sure you let me know in the comments down below, click the subscribe button, ring the notification bell next to it so that way you never miss an upload. And of course, if you enjoyed this style of video where I'm kind of redoing tanks or building new tanks, click that like button. That lets me know that you guys enjoy this type of video and are more interested for next time. While you're down in the comments section, feel free to ask any questions, comments, concerns that you guys have. I answer every single comment and I'll definitely chat with you in the comments section down below. So thanks for watching you guys. Have a good one. Later.